<laughs> Hello, this is the truth. Poverty is bad if you are actually poor, but why can't it also be entertainment, like on Benefit Street or American program called The Briefcase? The answer is it can be entertainment. It's entertaining. Being poor is fantastic. Let's have a look. Across America, hard-working families are feeling the impact of rising debts and shrinking paychecks. But why did that? distract you from possible entertainment opportunities. These tough times are testing the human spirit. <laughs> so bad. The human spirit is being tested. But here at CBS, the show is called The Briefcase. It centers on hard up families getting given 101 grand. They have to take the first grand and spend it on themselves to give them a taste of what financial freedom feels like. That's so brutal. There you go, did you enjoy your taste? Oh yeah, the taste of financial freedom was ever so pleasant. Now we have a dilemma for you. The briefcase. No where we go. What's this bizarre upbeat? No matter where we go, we'll be stalked by a terrible poverty. They're awful business. They have to decide whether to keep the underground or whether to give it to a family that's struggling more than them. That's like biblical cruelty. Each week, two deserving families that have been dealt a tough hand. We are living paycheck to paycheck. You know when you see sort of dystopian, futuristic, hellish things like Running Man or Hunger Games, they're not going to just pitch Hunger Games after X Factor, are they? They're going to move slowly towards, hey, why don't we get poor people to fuck each other to death in a pit? Okay, we've seen the briefcase. I'm so sick of struggling. How? What's happening? What's happening? Penalisation of the poor, the disposability of vulnerable members of our society, the increasing maltreatment of mental ill people and neglect that we show the vulnerable is supported by this. There is a connection between a cruel and brutal world of entertainment and people being cruel and brutal in society. We'll be given a briefcase with $101,000 inside. Is this really my money? Is this really my life? I'm afraid it is, yes. The share of wealth owned by the top 0.1% of America is the same as the bottom 90%. The top 1% of Americans control 37% of American wealth. Walmart's ruling family, the Waltons, has more wealth than 42% of American families combined. When people talk about, yeah, but you don't want communism, or yeah, but you know, like this, why? And people are completely unwilling to have this debate. Like, we're in such a diabolical situation. If you look in, if you talk to anyone who's an expert in what's happening ecologically on the planet, anyone who's an expert in what's happening with inequality, anyone who's an expert in what's happening with cultural differences and the problems it's causing, they'll tell you this is a time where it's really important for us to make some changes. And those changes begin with us as individuals from within. And if we don't start making those changes, we are not going to have a planet for our children to live on. We're, all, we're approaching crisis and we're doing it while watching evil, vacuous nonsense, which probably is quite good if you actually watch it, but it's stimulating the lowest and ugliest aspects of our nature. I've never even seen so much money in my life. Like when you watch like sort of gladiators or something, in Roman times, the bastards would get people to fight each other to death in a bloody coliseum. Like, you don't really see like sort of poor people holding money to their faces, cherishing it, when you know that the top 0.1% has got the same amount of money as the bottom 90% of Americans. Don't you think, well, hang on a second, that's so, whilst it's not so vivid as a Christian being eaten by a lion, it's worse. It could really help my family pay a lot of the student loans that we have. It sets up a house, everything that we've been dreaming for. Thank you guys so much. This is how capitalism works. Instead of trying to solve a fundamental and hideous problem, it makes entertainment out of it. This is Armageddon. But with the $101,000 comes a life-altering decision. The money is yours, but there also is a decision. You can keep all of the money, you can keep some of the money, or you could choose to give all of the money away. But haven't we had enough suffering? No. No, we've just got, this is just up to the first commercial break. In a minute, there's going to be a bid to see if you'll suck one of your family members' cocks for an extra 10%. What the families don't know is that they were both given a briefcase and are actually contemplating whether to give any money to each other. Perhaps the person that's invented this is like a genius. You know, sometimes you find out like that oh, actually behind this is Chris Morris or some comedic mastermind who's put it together to show us how horrific the world has become. 
But I've a feeling that it's not that, that this isn't an art installation by someone to make us go, fuck, Jesus Christ, right, right. Wake up! <laughs> Wake up, humanity! We've gone way off track! Yes, thank God you made the briefcase. It's made me realise that this inequality is out of control, that we need to look after one another, to turn poor people against poor people for our own amusement. Surely it's the heralding of the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. Well done! Oh, yeah, that is what I did. And for series two, we're just gonna do it again, but with more black people. In the end, both families will be flown to Los Angeles for a shocking reveal. In a way, where is the threshold of our shock? In Britain, we've got paedophile politicians in Parliament. In America, you sort of hear, Oh, Osama Bin Laden's been captured. Yeah, no, they had him in a compound for ages. The Navy SEALs didn't kill him. <laughs> we've just completely lost our ability to be shocked. Both of you were given a briefcase with $100,000 cash and have been deciding on whether to share any money with each other. Wow. In a way, maybe the program's not that bad. Maybe all the program's done is, this sort of thing's happening all the time. Tune in after the break. That's some true news. Subscribe here. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trues is like the nose. If the nose was true, I want some trues. Let's have some trues.